Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. How many times can you say praise God? As many times needed, praise the Lord. It's your, it's your mouth, it's your voice, it's your meditation, praise the Lord. Do you know that every time you praise God, what you're saying is, I'm meditating in you. I'm soaking myself in your word. I'm receiving the incorruptible seed. I receive your impartation, change for my life. Come on, let's do it together. Praise God, praise God, praise God. The Jewish folks in the synagogue, they say, Shalom, amen, shalom, amen, shalom, amen. Praise the Lord. So shalom, amen to you, viewer. Praise God. So I'm always honored. I feel privileged when the Lord allows me to get behind the pulpit to bring the word to you, to share it to you. Praise God. You know, uh, God is so wonderful. And today he's got a new series. If I can open up to my notes and I'll tell you the name of the series because I can't remember the name of the series. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. The name of this new series, the aim is working together. We can push the vision. Working together, we can push the vision. With that said, let's close our eyes. Bow our head as a form of respect and let's give our heart and mind to the moment, to Christ Jesus. All right, let's pray. Gracious Father, we come before you in the name of your son. According to your word, we ask you, Father, we ask you for peace. We ask you for a sound mind. We ask you to reveal to us your purpose. Father, if there's anyone right now that's been feeling captive. Father, I send the word. Let the word turn into a key and open up the lock and let them out of the cage in the name of Jesus. Father, fill your people today with hope. Fill them with joy, peace, believing, praise God, that you, are, that you can do anything, that you can do all things. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You are the spirit of truth. Guide us, lead us. Use the shepherd of this house right now to bring deliverance, to remove lies, and to bring the truth into the people's heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have made a quality decision that we're not going to be conformed anymore to the pattern of this world. But we be renewed in the transforming of our mind. Allow our mind to be transformed today so that we can do what is acceptable, perfect will of God. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say amen, 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 shalom, amen. And let's give God a wonderful applause. It's a form of praise out of the book of Psalms. And let's surrender to the Holy Spirit right now so we can hear the word. Praise God. Amen. Working together to push the vision. Praise the Lord. Working together to push the vision. Vision, praise God. In Philippians chapter 2, let's go there. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> okay, I could do it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. It's nice to see each and every one of you. I pray for each and every one of you here. You are my spiritual family, and I believe in the name of Jesus, I am your pastor. Praise God. And in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, please. That's Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. I'll read out of the King James, and then I'll go into, uh, thank you, Father. Then we'll go into the New Living Translation if we have time. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, the Lord imparts to us his word and tells us, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Praise the Lord. The reason why God gave us this scripture is to back up his title. Because each and every one of us here have been sent to this ministry, to this church, to this pastor. You are called to help in the vision of this ministry. Praise the Lord. Now we've been here 14 years. 
That's a long time to you. It's not a long time to God. Preparation takes time. But just this year, I, the veil been removed from my eyes. And I understand now the message, the email that he's been sending me to give to you. And that message is vision. Vision, praise the Lord. And I'm glad you're here today because today God's going to speak to you and you're going to get understanding why we need to work together to push God's vision. Okay? Now, in 1 Corinthians, go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, please. You're going to get a lot of scriptures today. But if you move with me, it won't seem like a lot. So write down the scriptures. If you can't stay up with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to try to be as gracious as possible and, and follow him so that I don't get out of pace. And 1 Corinthians, I said 1 Corinthians, please. 1 Corinthians 3.9. 1 Corinthians 3.9. It's going to give you more understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. The importance of decreeing something and being able to back it up with the word is a grace from God, is a gift from God. You know that I have the gift of teaching. You know I have the gift of pastoring. Praise the Lord. And that's why a lot of you have, some of you have grown up with me, and some of you know me for a long time, and you say, he's not the same guy that I met. And you're absolutely right. I'm not. Because through... The vision of God, God's been uh, changing me as he's been changing you. Uh, Rory, I like that thing we discussed about. Y you never leave God. You lose yourself. Write that down. You never leave God, and God never leaves you. When you go through what you go through, it's because you've lost yourself. So stop losing yourself. You find yourself in God. You're not like anyone else, praise the Lord. Do you know how many people God bypassed? How many people God had to go through, Mark, just to get to you? A lot of people. If you think about it, a lot of folks say, we're in my life, are not in my life anymore. And it's not because of my choice or their choice. They've gone on, praise the Lord. And God still has us here. That should tell you something about the purpose of God. His purpose is your purpose. His plan is your plan. When you lose yourself in God, sometimes it's hard to find yourself. Now, when you give yourself to God, is you are losing the old you, who's useless, any, useless anyway. Never produces, just murmurs, complains. If I can get one witness, I'll feel so much better. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you don't have to be my witness if you don't want to. I know the word is speaking to you right now. Because without God, we're useless. There's no purpose. Because you're only temporary here. And God's eternal. Okay, you're getting tired? I'll give you 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Get on your feet now. For we are God's fellow workers. There you go. You, me, are God's field. You are God's building. Look at the building right here. Touch yourself. You're the building. Praise the Lord. It doesn't mean that we don't come to the tent. We all have to come to the tent. To, why? To get regrouped. To be imparted to. Praise the Lord. So that can, we can deal, that's a good word, that's right. So that we can deal with the nonsense out there that we deal every day. So that we won't lose ourselves. We're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, was given to you as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and other build on it. Praise the Lord. That's the Apostle Paul saying, I'm an apostle. I give you the word. Now you're supposed to build on it. Whatever word I give you, you're supposed to water it. Praise the Lord. Let it grow. 
If you feel dormant, if you feel like you're not moving anywhere, it's because you have not been watering the word that I have given you. That's what the word of God is saying to you right now. That's what the Lord is saying. You, you're just allow, allowing the, those seed just to be still there. I've given you words to change your life. I've given you words so that you can get out of your economy situation. Don't you ever say that you're not blessed because you are blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't think so, then go to a third world country where they don't have a choice to have water whenever they want. Imagine using the same river, do your necessity there, drink water, wash clothes in the same river. You don't have to say amen. I don't care. Praise God. I'm going to say for you. Amen. It's the truth. You can get up as many times as you want and do your necessity in a different part of the house. You don't have to do it in the refrigerator or in the tub. Praise God. So what are we? We're God's fellow workers. That's why God is calling you and I need you to work together with me to help bring this vision to manifestation. God's given us a vision and that vision is a vision to bring him glory and honor. Now remember this, um, in Proverbs 29, 18, just write it down. In the Old King James, it says, where there is no vision, Reverend Mark, the people perish. The reason why we feel that we've been perishing or we're not accomplishing things, we have no vision. We, we borrow vision from other people. Uh, we want to be like others. But God has given you a specific, unique vision. And that vision connects you to him, the most high. Praise the Lord. And blesses the man or blesses the woman, Sister Brenda, that finds the vision of God. Praise God. It has not been waiting. It, write this down. Waiting is not a waste of time. Some of you don't know how to wait. Some of us don't know how to wait. I remember in 1998, uh, Clint Brown came up with a song, Waiting on You. Waiting on you. Yeah. Waiting on you. Patiently waiting on you. I don't worry about the time. Lord, I seem to find strength while I'm waiting on you. You got to wait on God. But we, we, we have this wrong mentality. We have a drive through mentality. We want it now. We want to do this. We want it. And then we're all over the place. Inhale through your nose right now. Exhale. Touch yourself. And say, thank God, it's going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Thank God, it's going to be all right. You're a fellow worker. I'm a fellow worker of God. There's different parts in this body. Okay? Some is the hand. Some is the feet. Some is the finger. Praise the Lord. Some work with the head. I work with the head. Praise the Lord. Who's the head? Jesus is the head. Amen? Jesus' eyes are on his head, not in the bottom of his feet. Praise the Lord. Not in his hand. It's in his head. So he's the head. Okay? Now, let me show you how, how important it is to have a man of God in your life so that he can show you the vision. God is not going to release the vision to everybody because he may lose you if he gives you the vision. Remember this, if you can write this down. The vision is older than I am. According to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Amen. Before you was in your mother's womb, I already knew you. So before you came to this earth, God already knew the purpose that you were coming to this earth. Amen. And then don't forget Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9, where he says he has shown you the mystery of his gospel. Just write it down. You can't go there because of time. I'm sorry. And then if you read there and he says to us that we've been predestined, praise the Lord. He says we've been predestined, we've been chosen. That's Ephesians chapter 1. He says we've been predestined, praise the Lord. And then he says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That means for you and I to get our blessing, we're going to have to interact in heavenly places. Praise the Lord. 
We're going to have to go to the unseen to pull the blessing down. But what we do here on earth, we curse ourselves. We speak bad about the situation around us. Instead of speaking change, because we don't have an idea of the vision. When a man has no vision, he's perishing. That's what the Bible says. A man or a woman without a vision perish. A man and a woman without a vision perish. You better hear what the word of God is saying to you. You're going to discover what you've been going through. Praise God. And it's time for change. Thank God that God chose you and you didn't choose God. Praise the Lord. Because you would have been choosing hell. You and I would have been choosing hell. In fact, we were going to hell if it wasn't for the intervention of the Holy Spirit. Now in verse 4, he says, just as he chose us in him. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That tells me the vision is older than you and me. The vision is a bridge from your now to your future. The Lord told me that the vision is seeing the impossible. And he told me that our mission is doing the impossible. Praise the Lord. If I had two witnesses, I'd be satisfied. Praise God. Don't tell me don't shout. Don't tell me don't praise. I'm going to praise and shout. Praise God. Just write what you can. Don't get thrown off. Stop being. Listen to the word the Lord gave us. It's giving you right now because he gave it to me. Stop being so sensual. You know what sensual means? Natural minded. Kusi kusa. Whatever will be, will be. What it is is what it is. No, it's not. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God has given us the power to change. He gave us his word. Praise the Lord. He gave us his word guides us, leads us into the vision. The devil don't care that you read your Bible, go to church, or say amen. What he, want, he doesn't want you to do is get the vision. Once you get the vision, the scales of your eyes has fallen off. Now you get to see who you really are and what you can do in your life for God. Verse 4, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him and love. See, once you walk in love, you can walk in holiness. And in him, in him, we're blameless. We didn't do anything to earn this, praise God. It was given to us by him. Can someone tell me who's him? Say, my rabbi. <laughs> He's my rabbi. My rabbi gave me this. We've been predestined as to be adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself. Praise God. Now let me tell you, we have to be very careful what we say amen to. There's a lot of deep revelation, supposedly, going on out there on Facebook, Instagram, social media. And we're saying, yeah, that, that sounds right. That's a lie. That's a lie. Family, I love you. That's a lie. Those deep revelation are a spirit of error, the Bible tells me. Now, let me explain to you why God gives you a pastor. Go to Numbers 27, please. We're going to move now. Numbers 27, in the Old Testament, the five book of Moses. One of the five book of Moses. Numbers chapter 27, verse 17, please. I think I'm going to switch it right now into the New Living Translation. I really do enjoy the way the New Living Translation translates this one praise God so that's chapter 27 verse 17 please and when you're there just give me a wonderful amen, amen. praise the Lord and we're going to dissect verse 17 I'm glad you're all there who may go out before them and go in before them who may lead them out and bring them in that's the congregation of the Lord. May not be like sheep, sheep without no shepherd. God has ordained for each and every one of us to have a pastor. Stop listening to these folks. Oh, you got the Holy Spirit. You know, you are a liar. You've been. 
write this down or, or say it with me. Stop letting the enemy seduce you like he seduced Eve. We need a shepherd. I need a shepherd. I have a shepherd. And my shepherd has a shepherd. And his shepherd had a shepherd when I'm with the Lord. We have shepherds. Somebody watching me. I'm watching you. Technically, God's watching all of us. But some of us, we don't have the grace to be able to understand what he's telling us. And that's why we sin and we do what we do. We don't have the control to say, no, I'm not going to do that. We don't have the power to tell the devil or our mind, but you used to do that. You did that. Shut your mouth. I ain't doing that. Now remember, in me and in you, the Bible says, if you think it's wrong, and then it will be wrong. Now if you don't think it's wrong, then it's not wrong. And remember, there are certain things that Paul said is permissible, but they're not beneficial. So if, if, the, if the thing is not benefiting you, benefiting you, whatever you're doing, then stop it. Somebody say amen. amen. Remember, we're not religious. We're, t we're teaching the word. And, and a lot of my fellow workers, they don't like what I say. And I said, well, then don't, don't, don't get mad at me. Just rip the page off the Bible. <laughs> if you're going to rip anything off the Bible, won't you rip off the part that says I'm going to hell? <laughs> you take that one out of here. We don't need that one. <laughs> Okay, he says that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep. You are sheep, I'm a pastor. I'm also a sheep. But I'm a leader sheep. Praise the Lord. I've been called to pastor you and those he put in my life. And believe me, I understand this very good now. I don't pastor people that does not have my spirit. I don't lead anyone that don't have my spirit. I don't need people to come to me because they want to vent. I need people to be with me because they're connected to God's vision. Praise the Lord. I didn't say my vision. I don't have a vision. God's got the vision. Praise the Lord. This vision ain't got nothing to do with me. This got to do all with God and those that are supposed to be coming. Our sons, our daughters, our grandkids. Praise the Lord, somebody. Our family. If you don't fly right, how do you think they're going to fly right? All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody's looking at us. I don't, know, I don't know if you understand that we are always on top of a soapbox. We're on stage constantly. And people watching us. And they don't say nice things when we do stupid things of us. <laughs> and they serve Jesus. You know what they say? I don't want to serve that Jesus if I'm going to act like a fool. <sighs> Praise you, Father. So, go to verse 20. Let's skip 18 and 19. Go to 20. And you shall give some of your authority to them that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. All right, let's go back to 18. Go back to 18. He doesn't want me to do this. And the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nun, and with you a man whom is the spirit. What is he saying? Stop right there. He's telling, Pastor V, he's telling Moses, get Joshua. Joshua has the same spirit you have. I made you, I made him. But he loves you like you love me. And this is leader, leadership time now. Because I'm talking to leaders here. Because you got the same spirit, you can work together. Praise the Lord. Because you can't. Listen to this. Some of you are going to have to understand this one. Some of you are leaders, not only in church, but also outside. You cannot position people in authority who doesn't. See how I'm talking to you? You cannot position people in authority that don't have your spirit. Because they won't bring you pleasure. They will bring you pain. 
So we've been yoked with a whole bunch of people that don't have the same spirit as we do. And then we're wondering why we're struggling. Because we don't have understanding. We need to get God's understanding. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Mark, if they don't have your vision and you try to connect with them or help them, sooner or later they will bring the vision. Instead of me receiving pleasure, I'm receiving pain. Because instead of letting God choose who he wants to work with me and me work with them, I've been going out choosing people on my own. God gives you someone, praise the Lord, that will guide you and lead you in the vision. Numbers 27, 17. That's why he says in Numbers 17, 27, 17, who may go out before them in the King James. You know what that word means? I go before the Lord before, Dad, I go before the Lord before I come before you. So before I enter those doors, I hope I was, in bef I was before the Lord. Otherwise, you just got a man giving a sermon. And, and, not, and not sharing God's email with you or the message. Now, some of us are very happy with someone giving us a sermon. Wow, that was a good sermon. Fifteen minutes, we were out the door. What a waste of time, waste of gas, and waste of effort. You were really inconvenienced for nothing. Now, remember, we have spoken about the vision. In the vision, there's no such thing. When you are partaking of the vision and work yeah i hear you lord listen to me when you're working and pushing the vision of god there's no waste of time you're not spending your time let's let's spend some time together i hate that i don't spend time i don't waste time i invest time all of us should get into that mode every all of us should get into that in our head and our heart you need to invest your time Numbers 27, 17. That man of God will go out before you in the presence of the Lord and hear from God. And then he'll come in before you. And then he'll be able to lead you in and lead you out. What does that mean? He'll be able to lead you into the vision and then guide you out to your assignment, your work. Okay? Now, let me teach you something. Please, I love you in the love of God. Our work is not our assignment. It's a place God gave us for us to receive seed so that we can sow, save, and span. Don't let the devil seduce you like he seduced Eve. I'm telling you, you know what he does? He takes the truth and just... Like they say in, in, in England, he just bends it a bit, you know, bends it a bit. And then you eat that bit pill. And now you know what happened? You start, you know, now don't think I'm telling you you can't work. Go work. But put God first. Give him time. The reason why we so stressed out and we have anxiety, family, is because we don't know how to meditate. Give yourself to Listen, you're going to do it once this bad, bo bad, bad, bad body, bad body, once this body passes and goes to dirt, your spirit is going to go somewhere to eternity. Ain't no such thing like the clash in the 80s. Should I stay or should I go? No, you're going to go, baby. Because the suit, you gave it up. And don't be surprised. Instead of going up, we go somewhere else. Because we wasn't really, really. There's two type of people. The, uh, people of obedience and people of disobedience. So right now, if your mind is fighting your spirit, just inhale through the nose, exhale through your mouth. You're not supposed to like your pastor. Your pastor's going to stretch you. Praise the Lord. But I'd rather you be upset with me and God very happy with me. 
And God can say, well, you told him the truth, so now it's up to you. Because everybody, it's up to everybody. You know, either I follow this one or I follow that one. Either I stay here or I go, you know. You know, it's simple. It, the, the yes and the no is mine. Everybody understand that? You need to do what is good for you. The yes and the no is mine. I'm telling you that when we put the Lord first, praise God, okay, your life will change. And this is why God gives you a, a pastor, praise the Lord. Anything out there is just gifts from God. My truck is a gift from God. My job is a gift from God. My house is a gift from God. My wife is a gift from God. Everything I got was because of God. So I, sh I shouldn't be tipping God with my time, my talent that he gave me, especially my treasure. That's right, Pastor V. You give where you at, but it comes a time that he's going to give you plenty. Because if you're faithful in the little, but we're not faithful in the little thing. So how can we see the big things? When we get the little thing, we just tear it up because we like, you know, it's a Daffy Duck syndrome or something. I don't know. My, 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 my. <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> like, dude, you're going to need to break a little piece of that and put it away, you know. Oh, what about the bills? We're more faithful to the bills than we are to God. That's crazy. God's eternal. I know you don't understand eternal because eternal is in the unseen world. What you see is temporary. I'm trying to get you back home. That's all. What you see is temporary by telling you the truth. God will give you someone. God will give you someone. God does not want you to be like sheep without shepherd. Listen to this. Write this down. God does not give you wasted space. He fills your space. When you write it down, look at me and I'm going to show you where your space is at. Praise you, Father. That man of God, that woman of God that he gives you, that man and that woman better be interceding for you, Rory. Rory, I read a book called The Four Agreement. You should look for, you should look for that book. It's a powerful book. It'll help you um, become a better manager, daughter. And in, the, in chapter 2, in The Four Agreement, it says, Never take nothing personal. Never underestimate anyone and never take nothing personal from anyone. So you can fart in front of me. I said fart. That's right. I said fart. And you know what? I'm just going to say, hey, cut it out. And I'll keep walking. I'm not going to get upset with you. I'm not going to try to smell it with you, okay? Or articulate it with you. It seems like you had fish last night. <laughs> Did it have garlic? <laughs> I move on. Sister Brenda, you get what I'm saying? This is a real pastor. Move on. Look, do like the duck. And move on. Move on. God needs you. I need you to help me with the vision. Praise the Lord. God does not want you to be without a, a shepherd. That's why God baptized you. That's why God, praise the Lord, gave you a church. That's why God gave you a ministry. This is your ministry, not my ministry. Praise the Lord. I'm just the shepherd, the one that goes before God, and then comes before you after. Praise the Lord. Amen? So that means if you don't help me build the ministry, the ministry won't grow. I hope you're listening to that, Pastor. I know you're listening to me out there. Spirit of God is telling me that you are. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's been pre-recorded, but you're listening, you're watching. Praise God. It is up to you. It is up to you to do what you need to do. Now, let me give you some good nuggets. In the book of Jude, go to Jude quickly, please, family. I love you. Wow, I'm sorry. It just goes. Jude in the New Testament. J-U-D-E, Jude. Jude. Hey, there they are, precious. Praise the Lord. There they are. Amen. In the book of Jude, chapter, there's only one chapter there, by the way. Verse 19. 
it tells us, we're going to talk about the vision again. Well, we, I guess I've been, we've been talking about the vision. Jude, there's only one chapter, so it's verse 19. Yeah. So, if I try to build God's vision with people who don't have the same spirit, what's going to happen? Eventually, division will come in. Because to have the same vision or to have the same spirit, let's call it the spirit, to have the same spirit, you have to be, according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, remember we read it when we opened up? And one mind and one accord. You can't give position to people who don't have your spirit. Now, I know sometimes we meet someone new and then you say, that's why we have um, a, a 30 window, a 90 day gap. Praise the Lord. You, you can learn a lot from that person in 30, 90 day. Praise the Lord. Is that person judgmental? Is that person very central? Is that person very sentimental? Praise God. When it comes to leadership, you have to be called to lead. Some of us are not. Some of us are called to follow. And we have a grace. We have a gift. God has given us a measure of faith. And we have to get in position. In the old days, we used to say, get tied to the post. Praise the Lord. Get tied to the post. Amen. So in Jude 1.19, it says, These are central persons who cause division not having the same spirit. You see it there? So see what I tell you is coming out of the word of God. If, Sister Brenda, you're helping out somebody and you see that somebody does not really, there's two types of people you cannot help. Some of you have heard me say this before. I'll continue saying it until we both become red in the face. You can't help people who think they don't have a problem. And you can't help people who think you're my problem. No, I, 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 you've been like this before you met me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So two type of people you cannot help. Those that don't have a problem, those that think they don't have a problem, and those that think you're their problem. That's why it's important to have a shepherd. A shepherd will guide you and lead you. Praise the Lord. You know, you give your shepherd more hard time than you do those out there. And that's why the Bible tells you, be kind to those that are watching over your soul. They're doing it unto the Lord. We're not, I'm not doing this because I'm making a million dollars a year. I'm doing this because this is my calling. Praise the Lord. I'm tied to the post. Praise God. Let me tell you something, Roy. A lot of men of God will not, will not teach, preach if ain't, there ain't nothing for them there. Okay, and I understand the, 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 the people that don't bless their priests won't be blessed. I understand that. You got to bless up so the blessing can come down. Praise the Lord. I understand that. But everyone looks at things differently. My vision is different than the, than the guy's vision down the block. That's why God didn't put you down the block. He can't put you over here. Praise the Lord. And you and I, we connect. We love each other. You know that. And we just want to see one thing. Let's grow this for God. Praise God. Amen. There are people that are starving. There are people that need to go to a place and fellowship and they don't have it because they don't know where to go. Someone has to advertise. Praise the Lord. Someone has to evangelize. And listen, it just, it goes like the, the vision grows when you bring, bring people in. Now there's a core value in this place and you know that. I'm not going to say it now on the air, but if you don't know it, tell me and I'll tell you. Five, five principles. It's in the amendments in the bylaw. Don't hang out with sensual people. Stop following the natural instinct. It will kill you. That's not God's spirit. Stop putting people in position in places who don't have the spirit. Can't deal with it. Just because you're mentoring the person or loving on the person doesn't mean, hello, that you can trust their mind. Their mind will turn on you in a heartbeat. Amen. And then you say, what happened? I did all this for that person. You didn't do it for that person. Write this down. Colossians 3.23. You did it unto the Lord. Amen. But if you knew your vision, you, you won't take it personal. Oh, well, who cares? 
Some people tell me, you're too good, you're too kind. No, I'm, in, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, hey, look, can, can I teach you like I really feel it? Shame on you if you want to duke me. <laughs> shame on you. Now, shame on me if I want to get even. I didn't get no amen, maybe one or two, praise the Lord. One or two. I understand, Pastor, but it feels so good when I hit him in the head with a bat. Yes, it does. But you can't do that, <laughs> praise the Lord. Because <laughs> now we're being led by the natural. All right? Okay, good. We're, we're right here. Where are we right now, and, and scripture-wise? Jude? Okay, good. So let's go to Ephesians 4.11. And then I'll give you two more scriptures, and then I have to close up. I'm sorry. Ephesians 4.11. Ephesians 4.11. Remember, Numbers 27, 17, tells you that you need a pastor. Now, Ephesians 4.11 will tell you who put that pastor in your life. So in Ephesians 4.11, when you're there, just shout amen. amen. Thank you. And then the Bible says, and he himself gave some to be apostles. He called some to be apostle. That doesn't mean that everybody in the church of God is an apostle. You're not an apostle. Cut it out. We see a lot of titles, but we don't see no real positions. So when you find yourself an apostle, hold on to that apostle. Some prophets, some evangelists, some Pastors and some teachers. This is the fivefold ministry. This is our grace. This is the office. So when you find yourself a good pastor, hold on to him or her. When you find a good teacher, hold on to her. Hold on to him. Praise the Lord. So according to Numbers 27, 17, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, that tells me we need a pastor. I don't believe you. Okay, let's do the Father, let's do the Son, let's do the Holy Ghost. I love when you challenge me. I'm the 67th book of the Bible. I should have been born Irish. I fight you yesterday. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Praise the Lord, somebody. Whew. Amen. Jeremiah, 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 not the bullfrog. Jeremiah, please, 315. I got it now, 315. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. Here we go. You there? Great. Can I read it? Yes. Oh, thank you. You, you can't expect, that, that's why some of you, I spend time alone with you. So that I can impart into you differently than I do with others. So if I ask you to get together with me, and I'm rearranging my schedule, it's because God is nudging me to do that with you. It's about your future and your vision. I know my vision, I know my future. Now he wants you to have your vision and your future in front of you so that no one's son can come and punch you in the head and, and push you, not physically, physically they'll get murdered by you. I'm talking about spiritually. The devil seduced Eve. In Galatians it says, who bewitched you? When people want to mess you up, they, they work on you mentally, not physically. They're not, they're not dumb. They're not going to come and push you. They work on it. They're nice to you, and then they turn around and give it to you. How, how many of us have experienced that? They're first nice to us, and then they turn around and give it to me. And I don't like getting it that way. <laughs> right, Rory? I don't like getting it that way. After I open up my heart to you, then you're going to give it to me. Don't tell me you're going to do something for me, and you don't do it. You know what I mean? Carry it out. Somebody say, carry it out. Carry it out. That's, that's military talk. You know that. Carry on. Praise the Lord. So here it tells you in Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you shepherds, pastors, according to my heart. So I have the heart of God. I received that. Thank you. 
who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So the reason why you come here is to receive knowledge and understanding. Don't forget in Numbers 27, verse 17, he says he will give you a pastor that will go before you. He'll go before God before he comes before you. That's very biblical. So anytime I'm going to get on this pulpit, I better be before in the presence of the Lord. Believe me, I'm not listening to Perry Como saying, Mama likes Mambo, Papa likes Mambo. So I can give you Mambo and Cha 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 over here on the pulpit. I can do that off the pulpit. And you guys will love it, believe me. Because there's a time for everything. Praise the Lord, I feel His presence. There's a time to be sad, there's a time to cry, there's a time to fight Rory, there's a time to make up. Don't take nothing personal. That's for you, sir. Nothing personal. Don't take nothing personal, son. Nothing personal. Don't take it personal. Let, listen, listen, listen. Let your life be impeccable. Praise the Lord. You know what that means? Ask the Holy Ghost. No matter how many times they they'll say, my God, he doesn't change or she doesn't change. Because you got the vision. You know the vision. The scale has come off your eyes. Now you know why you're here. You know, you know your purpose. You know your plan. Because it comes from God. Praise the Lord. That's right. Don't think that everybody that started with you is going to end with you. It's not going to happen. So my job is to get you in position. According to Numbers 27, 17, Ephesians 4, 11, Jeremiah 3, 15, Whoa, somebody scream. And then when you're in position, verse 16, then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied, increase in the land in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, it shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall they be made any more. Praise the Lord. Thank God for increase. God does not make wasted space. God does not make wasted space. God fills place. It's time to fill the place, praise the Lord. It's time to get your wallet filled. It's time to get your life filled, praise God. No more wasted space. Jesus, I love you. You must find, the Lord says, you must find, you must find. Some of them don't have it, that's why. You must find your vine dresser. And everyone has a vine dresser. You must find your vine dresser. The reason why people are discouraged and dismayed, they haven't found their, they haven't found their vine dresser. Stay close to the man of God. Praise the Lord. Take advantage of that. Go to Jeremiah 23. Go to Jeremiah 23. We're in Jeremiah, right? So let's go to 23 now. Jeremiah 23. Praise the Lord. Good scriptures, Pastor. Yes, it is. 23, verse 3. Doing good timing. Watch, watch what he's doing now. Now that you're understanding the vision. Oh, praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now that you're understanding the vision. You doing okay, Ray? Now that you're understanding the vision. Okay, I'm supposed to do this. I, I was sent here for this reason. I'm supposed, this is God's ministry. He put me here. This is my ministry. That's my man of God. That's my pastor. He gave me that man. Praise the Lord. He's supposed to give me knowledge and understanding. It's not the man who gives you the knowledge and understanding. It's the man that God chose to go before him. He could have chose anybody here. He could have chose anyone else. But he chose me to be connected to you. Praise the Lord. Because he knows that I understand you and you understand me. And, and together we understand God better. Somebody say amen. <laughs> yeah, I understand you and you understand me. And together we understand God better. 
And we'll get through those uh, difficult things that you think of and, and you don't want to think of and you don't want to do. The things that I don't want to do is the things that I do. The things that I don't want to do is the things that I do. I'll get you from Romans 7 into Roman 8. Praise the Lord. Romans 7 is a carnal man. Roman 8 is a spiritual man. Roman 7 is a carnal woman, a sensual woman, a natural woman. I'll get you out of there and we'll go together to Roman 8. Just let's follow the message that God gave us. Hallelujah. Let's read his email. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we can do it together. I said together, not individually. Now, where am I? Jeremiah 3, tw Jeremiah 23. Thank you. But I will gather the remnant of the flock out of the country where I have driven them and bring them back to their fold. How many understand the fold is here, the congregation? That's your fold. And they shall be fruitful and increase. Once you line up in your fold, you'll become fruitful and you increase. All right? Don't think about yesterday. This is what's happening. This is a now word. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. With you or without you, it's going to happen. That's why he won't send us these type of emails if it's not going to happen. I've been reading to you different type of email. And if the truth be known, I've been having you in Anytime Fitness, and we've been working out your bicep, your tricep. <laughs> but we didn't learn nothing about our mission. Exactly. What is your vision? Seeing the impossible. Listen to it spiritually. What is your vision? Vision is what you become in the future. Mission is what you're doing right now to become that. Well, I, I want to move to Canada. I want to have a house. I want to have two dogs. And, and, and I want to have a safe full of guns. Then do something about it. Because it ain't going to happen like this. Yeah. I wish I could twist, twitch my nose like Elizabeth Montgomery, big witch. Yeah. It ain't going to happen like that. You got to do something for it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to do something for it. 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 You got to work for it. Your salvation is free, but you still got to work your salvation. Verse 4, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Once you connect yourself to your man of God, come on now, praise the Lord, and that man of God's vision that God's given him comes on you, because that's part of your vision too. You will move from lacking. Listen, two times we read it. From lacking into being fruitful into multiplying. Now, if you doubt, that's your problem. If you don't understand, that's your problem. But I know that those that are here have my spirit. I can understand somebody who I just know they don't have my spirit. Listen, 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 listen. If you got to always be explaining yourself. This is for the leaders not only in the house of God, but outside there too. George, if you've got to be explaining yourself all the time, Jody, that means that person don't have your spirit. They're questioning you. Brenda, I love it. You received it. They're questioning you, Ray. How come this? How come that? How come don't you disappear? <laughs> And leave me alone. <laughs> Just vomitose <laughs> right out of here. Stay close to your man of God. Don't look at your man of God with wrong pair of eyes. Don't look at your man of God with the wrong pair of eyes. Because you'll never see the vision. And the vision must become real to you. You are going to have to learn how to eat the vision, drink the vision, smell the vision, sleep with the vision. Focus, 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 focus on the vision. And with that said, my time, I guess, is up. Not really. Your time is up. <laughs> Listen, I love you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And we'll see you real soon. Remember that Jesus, our rabbi, is Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord.